Today's my birthday. I turn 42. Just yesterday, I was only 41. If I were in South Korea, I might celebrate with cake and candles, but not with a new age. If I were in South Korea, I would have been 43 yesterday, just like today, just like tomorrow. Unless I were using my age for things like military service, in which case I'd be 42, turning 43 in a few months. Or wait, unless I were calculating my age based on a new law, then I'd be 42 for the first time today. Confused? We'll sort it out on today's lesson. Hi there, I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. And yes, it really is my birthday, the day of the moon landing in 1969, and Colombian Independence Day. So happy Independence Day to our listeners in Colombia. This is lesson number 591 of Plain English, so you can find the transcript and full lesson resources at plainenglish.com slash 591. That is thanks to JR, the producer. There's an expression in English, age is just a number. But in South Korea, age is two numbers, or even three numbers, because of the different ways they calculate age there. Or at least it was until a new law took effect, standardizing the way people calculate their ages. As a result, Everyone in South Korea just got one or two years younger. I'll explain in today's story. Now, after the story, I'll show you how to use the English expression, imagine that, and we have a song of the week from JR. Let's get going. Until recently, if you had asked someone from South Korea their age, they might have hesitated before replying. It's not because they're shy. Quite the opposite. In South Korea, it's common to ask people their ages. It's because in South Korea, they calculate their ages differently. In most of the world, on the day of your birth, you're zero years old. After a year has passed, you celebrate your first birthday and you're now one year old. Each time the calendar passes your birthday, you add another year to your age. But in South Korea, it's different. In South Korea, on the day you're born, you're one year old. And instead of adding a year to your age on your birthday, you add a year to your age every day. January 1st. That means the whole country gets one year older together every New Year's Day. This was confusing the first time I heard it, so let's take an example. A baby born on December 1st, 2022 would be one year old on the date of her birth. Imagine that, her first day on earth, 
and she's already won. Then, just one month later, on January 1st, 2023, just like everyone else in the country, she would add a year to her age. She'd be two years old in South Korea and just one month old in the rest of the world. When I first heard of this, I thought it made absolutely no sense. This isn't even a close approximation of your age. How can a society exist with such an illogical system of calculating age? But then I read a quote that explained that the South Korean system is actually very accurate. It's accurate at measuring something else. You see, The South Korean system doesn't measure how many years you've been alive for. The system measures how many years you've been alive in. Think back to that December 1st baby. When she was born on December 1st, 2022, she was alive in... The calendar year, 2022, there's one. Then, when the calendar flipped on January 1st, 2023, just one month later, she was alive in 2023, her second calendar year. So, although she has only been alive for one month, She's been alive in two calendar years. So the South Korean system describes her as two years old, whereas the international system describes her as one month old. Both are right. They just measure different things. To make matters even more confusing, even South Korea has used multiple measures of age for different purposes. In many situations, they use the Korean age. For some legal and medical purposes, they've used the international age. And for some Other legal purposes, like calculating the drinking age or the age of military service, they've used a modification of the South Korean age. In that calculation, instead of starting at 1, you start at 0, but you add a year every January 1st. That means that South Koreans have had three ages, the international age, the South Korean age, and the mixture of the two. But that all changed in June of this year when a new law took effect. South Korea has officially adopted the international age for almost all purposes. You can still use your traditional age in conversation, but all your government documents will show your international age, and most government or official functions will use your international age. So this means that everyone will now turn back the clock and be a year or two younger. People with birthdays in the second half of the year will subtract two years from their age. Those with birthdays 
in the first half of the year will subtract one year from their age. Surveys show that South Koreans are ready for the change. Taiwan, Japan, and North Korea followed similar age customs but transitioned to the international standard decades ago. As the world gets more global, South Koreans say, they're ready to align with other countries. Almost 90% say they'll begin to use their international age in conversation and in everyday life. In South Korea, age is more than just a number. Like in other languages, there are degrees of formality and politeness in Korean. And in South Korea, the form of language you use is much more directly connected to the age of the person you're talking to. It's common in South Korea to ask a person their age even before asking their name. It will help you know how to address that person in conversation. This is leading to some awkward situations. Two children in the same class at school who were the same age before the transition might now be separated by a year after the transition. And the younger ones might now have to address their classmates in a more formal version of Korean. Well, the transition might be a happy occasion for anyone who's recently celebrated a milestone birthday. 30, for example. If you just turned 30, you'll have the chance to celebrate turning 30 again next year. I saw a really funny quote. A South Korean woman was about to turn 30 later this year, and she said her parents were pressuring her to get married and start a family. They said, by the time you're 30, you really need to get serious about family life. Now, she said, she can tell her parents to relax. She's really only 27. She's got plenty of time. The government says that during this transition, nobody will lose any rights. So if you were of the legal drinking age before, you won't be underage now. The change won't affect people every day, but the government hopes it will eliminate confusion. Every time a policy was tied to age, the government had to specify what method of calculating age it used, and it caused confusion. During the pandemic, one agency said that children between ages 12 and 18 had to show proof of vaccination. They sensibly calculated it based on the Korean age. Another agency made vaccines available to everyone 12 and older under the international system. And so children 12 years old under the Korean system were required to show proof of vaccine, but they were 10 or 11 under the international system, which made them ineligible to get the vaccine. This is making my head hurt. (music) 
When did we do Buyer Beware? Was that last week? I think that was last week, last Thursday. Buyer Beware was one of those phrases that you don't work into a sentence. You just kind of put it between sentences. Today's expression is similar. It's imagine that. You just throw this expression out there. It doesn't belong in a sentence. You just say it between sentences when you feel it. Imagine that is a way to express surprise or disbelief at a situation. It's very informal. It's not very common, but it works in some specific situations. In today's lesson about South Korea, I was describing the different ways to calculate your age. In South Korea, I explained, the day a baby is born, that baby is one year old. Your first day on this earth, I said, and you're already one year old. Imagine that. I'm expressing surprise or disbelief. Why? Well, according to the international standard, if you want to be age one, you have to earn it. You have to get through that first year. And that's not an easy year either. You spend most of it crying. If you haven't lived one full year, 365 days, or sometimes 366 days, if you haven't done that yet, you can't call yourself one year old. But in South Korea, you get to be one year old just for coming out of the womb. Imagine that. Surprise. Disbelief. Now look, it was a complete coincidence that this lesson about birthdays is coming out on my birthday. I swear, first of all, we have only two episodes a week. So not every year has an episode on my birthday. I already wrote the episode about Russia, which meant that the birthday lesson would be Thursday. And I didn't honestly know what day this would come out until I set up the files this week and saw Thursday would be July 20th. So imagine that the lesson about Korean birthdays would come out on my birthday. Imagine that, just an expression of surprise. This is often used sarcastically. You can say, imagine that if you want to sound surprised when you're not really surprised. I had a colleague who would always call in sick on a Friday. He didn't try very hard to disguise it either. Like, he never called in sick on a Wednesday. Every Friday, working from home, not feeling well. Sometimes we would forget it was Friday and we'd try to get in touch with him. We'll call him Oliver, not his real name. Thank you, ChatGPT. I might be in a meeting and I might say, is Oliver at his desk? Let's see where he is on his part of the problem. And someone would say, oh, Oliver isn't here. And I might be tempted to say, ah, it's Friday and Oliver's out sick. Imagine that. Now that's expressing mock surprise. I wasn't really surprised, but I used imagine that as a way of expressing sarcastic surprise. Imagine that he's not here on a Friday. I tried 
Not to be sarcastic in professional situations like that, but sometimes it was impossible. JR, what a guy. He let me pick the song of the week on my birthday. So as the special guest song picker for today, and today only, I'm picking Golden Heart by Mark Knopfler. You might not know that name, but you might know the band Dire Straits. Mark Knopfler was the lead singer for Dire Straits. They were one of the most commercially successful bands of the 1980s and 1990s. After the band broke up, Knopfler took a few years off and then released a solo album in 1996. In the song's lyrics, the golden heart was on a necklace a girl was wearing, and the singer meets her, I think just once, but she makes an impression on him. She gives him the pendant, and he keeps it as a reminder of the time they met. Golden Heart by Mark Knopfler is the song of the week. Thank you, JR, for letting me pick this week. Well, that's all for today's Plain English lesson number 591. If you're looking for the transcripts, just go to plainenglish.com slash 591. The transcript is in two pieces. The main story and the expression are on different pages, but the full transcript is there. plainenglish.com slash 591. Have a great weekend. I'll see you right back here on Monday.